Hey, back I am. In the last video we left with our possibility of seeing our list here, editing our list items here and navigating to our new contact page. But we're not able to insert a new contact as of now. We're going to change this in this video. A good place to start is by setting up our form here. I will therefore copy all of the code here because this is how we added our contact and creating a new one is pretty similar. Copying this here and I won't need the inputs here. I also won't need the two-way binding because we're creating a new contact, we're not binding to an existing one. And this is the basic form, but we'll also need a button to submit it, create contact. And if I now reload, we see this form. But obviously nothing is happening when I click this button because it isn't wired up to anything. Now, when I click this button, I obviously want this contact to be inserted and I also want to be navigated back to this contacts list so that we can instantly see that it was inserted. Now, let's take care about the insertion first. We will use our service again. At the moment, we got a method to get our contacts and I will add a new one to insert a contact. Now, obviously, this will take an argument of type contact. So we will pass a complete compact, uh, contact there to, into this function. And I will use again my promise to resolve my data source, in this case, the contacts variable we set up here. Now, as I mentioned in the video, when we talked about services first, obviously in a real app, you would probably somehow query a server, create a connection to a server. But in this case, well, our contacts variable is the data source and we will come to setting up a data connection to a server using a RESTful server as a data source in a later video, I promise. Now here we're resolving our contacts variable and once it is resolved we can access it with the that then function and here we will our, have our fat arrow function which will pass an argument of the contacts arrow we just got and then we will use this contacts array and push our contact on it. So we will add our new contact to the array. That's that. Now it won't work still because it isn't wired up at all. Back in our new contact I will set up a click event on this button here where I will execute the on add contact method and I won't pass any arguments as of now. Now set up this method down here on add contact and here I want to access my service and insert a new contact. Now remember if we want to access our service we have to inject it in this component. Now to do this I'll set up my constructor here and I will pass my contact service which I will then automatically bind to a private property. So private contact service of type contact service again automatically imported for me here and then I can here access this contact service and insert a contact which I still have to create. Uh, for testing purposes I'll create a dummy contact here which is basically just a contact object which has a first name of dummy and a last name of contact and I won't pass a phone number or email as of now. So pass this dummy contact here and now this won't work because if I click this Mm, the app is somehow broken. Why could it be broken? Because we're injecting the contact service here in our constructor, but our component doesn't know anything about this service. So we have to set up our provider's metadata data here, an array. And here we specify that we want to use the contact service. Save this, reload, and if we now click create contact, and go back to our contact list, we can see our dummy contact here. Now obviously we don't want to inject the dummy contact, we want to be able to create a contact ourselves. Because at the moment if we enter anything here, 
that get created, it always just creates this dummy contact, obviously, because this is the only thing we're passing here. Now, get, let me get rid of this dummy contact here. And instead, I'll create a real contact. Lat contact of type contact. And this will then be obviously an object where I have a first name of anything, a last name, anything, phone, and email. And then I can pass this here. Now, this data should be passed to this method here. So I have my first name, my last name, my phone, and my email. And then I can replace these quotation marks here with the respective arguments or parameters we're getting in this function. Phone and email. Now to add or to pass these arguments, I'll have to do something here in my template because at the moment I don't know in which input element which argument is passed or embedded. So to do this, I'll give each of these input fields here a local variable. Recall that we do this by adding a hashtag in front of the vari variable name. So first name, last name, e uh, phone, and email. And then I can pass the data to my method. Now if I were to pay pass the full variable, like first name, then this would not work. Because first name is not only what we enter inside this input element, but it is the whole input element. So everything, all configuration, all styling attached to this element. So in order to just pass the value, I will access the value property. So first name value, last name value, phone value, and email value. Now, this method hopefully looks a bit complicated to you because, well, we have to pass all these variables here and we, we have to have a method which takes all these variables here and here's a comma missing, I see. And if we add a new input field, we would have to add it here and we would have to change our method here and every change would be very, very complicated. And if we add validation, it would be difficult and whew, not really the kind of thing that makes a lot of fun. Angular 2 has a powerful form package, so to say, built in, where we have a lot of methods and functionalities to use in conjunction with forms. So this is the most difficult way we could do it. But as this, is, uh, this video focuses on how we can create a new contact with the service and how we can route back to our contact list, I will have an extensive forms videos coming up, obviously, as this course will cover all the basics of Angular 2. I will talk about forms in future videos. But as of now, let's do it this way and then we will fine tune it in future lectures. So now that I pass this, I save this and now let's, let's, add, it. let's add a test contact here. So let's call her Monica. Monica Arafa, uh, give her some random phone number and monica at gmail.com. Create this contact and well, that looks pretty good to me. Let's create another one like June Auber, another number here, and June at Yahoo. Create her. Okay, well, that seems to work. Great. Now, the last thing is, I don't want to have to click up here. I want to be taken back automatically when I click Create Contact. So, to do this, I will somehow need a possibility to, to trigger this routing out of this on add contact function here. And I can do this by injecting the router into this new contact component. And then I can call a method on the router object, which is called navigate, which allows me to, to trigger a routing action, so to say, which allows me to redirect the user to another page, even though he didn't click any link. 
To do this, I'll inject the router here into my constructor, private router, automatically bind it to the router property here, router. Again, very important, make sure that you got this import here. And now I can call this router navigate. And now this navigate method takes an array as an argument. And this array can contain different configurations or some, some yeah, configuration to this routing action, so to say. In this case, we'll only need the name of the route we want to navigate to, which if you can look it up here in our app component, has the name contacts. That's the contact list. So I will just enter a string here, contacts, save this, and let's try it. Again, add Monica here, Aubrey's Monica at gmail.com. Again, I, I got no validation going on here. Remember that we'll fix this in a future video, create contact, and we're taken back. Now, if you're a careful watcher, there might be something you feel a little bit strange about. Why does this work? I inject the router here, but I'm not setting it up here. The contact service wouldn't work if I were to delete this. Why does the router work? The router works, the router can be injected because we're setting it up here in our bootstrap method, in our boot.ts file, we're providing the information about our router providers, which are then injected here the first time or, or used the first time in our app component. So the router is something we're injecting or we're setting up here on the top level in our app component. If we would not have this here, besides the fact that our whole app wouldn't work, we could not use it here too, because Angular 2 has a dependency injection hierarchy, which basically means if a top component knows how to inject something, a component nested inside it, so a child component, is also available to use this injection. That's very important that you are aware, are aware of this injection hierarchy. So the contact service has to be provided here and in our contact list because these two components are siblings. They are not in a child-parent relation. And that, that is a very important thing to know that we got this injection hierarchy thing going on in Angular 2. And that's why this does work with the router here, even though we're not setting it up here in our provider's metadata. So that's everything I want to cover in this video. In the next video, we'll have again a look at routing and we will have a look at passing an argument with a route. So for example, if we were to have IDs on our contacts and we would want to look up a specific contact with a specific ID, then we could use a route where we pass this ID and we will create some kind of thing like this in the next video. See you there. Bye.